Hello everybody, welcome to Water Tech with Todd. I'm your host, Todd Schneider, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the Watts 25 AUB. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this 25 AUB. Now today, uh, this is a three-quarter. They come from half to two inch, uh, but we're going to go over some of the key features, and one of the big ones when you're looking at any sort of PRV is you want to read this tag. Uh, this is going to be the 25 AUB-Z3. Um, and the big one when we're talking about pressure reducing is knowing our set point. Your standard 25 AUB will come between a set point of 25 and 75. If you need it lower, you're not going to be able to use this valve. Uh, we'll have to go to a different model. Or if you need it set higher than 75, we'll need to get into a different model as well. All right, so when looking at our 25 AUB, you know, everyone, it's pretty recognizable. We got our cone up here. Um, but also when you look at the bottom, you're also going to see two ports out here at the bottom. Um, and we'll get these taken apart so you can see what's inside it. But uh, the first port we got is actually our built-in strainer, which is super important when you're um, dealing with any sort of equipment. Um, we need a strainer because any debris that we get inside this valve is really going to chew up the internals. Um, the second port that we have here is one that we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time on. Um, and this is where we're going to be jumping into uh, removing the washer, uh, pulling the stem out, and taking a look at everything. All right, so when we're working with this device here, uh, we all know that it's going to be taking extremely high pressure and it's going to be dropping it to low. Uh, but when we're dealing with that, uh, I get a lot of calls that, hey, my pressure is fine. I just don't have good volume. It's like I have a high amount of volume and then it drops off. Well, like as we talked about first, uh, our first port is going to be our strainer. Uh, and the best thing to do when you start getting volume wise, instead of just taking this thing and throwing it away and replacing it, we have our strainer and it's really easy. If you know where it's at, what we're going to do is we're just going to unscrew our bottom port. Okay. And then what we have inside is going to be our built in strainer. And what it's happening is water is actually going to be coming through this device dropping down through the center and then feeding out to the piece of equipment through our screen. So just this uh, screen alone, just this little strainer is going to double, if not triple the life of any other valve out there because we're able to keep all the debris out of there. Other thing is what you're going to notice is this is not a tapered thread. This has actually got an O-ring seal. So you don't need a big heavy pipe wrench when you take it out. You clean it off. We'll send it right back up inside there and then screw on our cap. But you're gonna notice I don't have a bunch of big wrenches. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go hand tight and then I'll take my wrench and just do a small quarter turn. Remember, we have an O-ring seal in here so we don't need Teflon tape and pipe dope. Uh, we're able to take this strainer out. This is something that I personally do once a year just to clean it out and get the debris out of there. And then I won't work with my, I won't mess around with my internal components. All right, so maybe another problem you're having is say your volume's fine, but your pressure keeps creeping up at night or it's dropping all the way down. What we want to do is rebuild this valve. This is not a throwaway valve. This is not something that you need to install and then take out two, three years and just throw it away. Um, we're able to rebuild this valve. Um, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to move over here to our second port. We'll remove this off the bottom. Okay. And what it's going to do is it's going to expose this uh, screwdriver thread type deal. Take a standard screwdriver and break that loose. And then unthread it. All right. What you're going to notice right off the bat is we also have a washer in here. Okay. So that washer is basically going to be pushing down and then coming back up to seal that off. And just like any device, internally what we'll have is we're going to have a seat that's sitting around here where this washer is actually going to push up and seal it off. If this has a rip in it or if a bunch of rocks they got on it and tore the rubber up, what's going to happen is it's never going to seal off and our high pressure will leak across to the downstream, increasing the pressure uh, and not keeping it basically stable. Okay, so we've gotten this out, but we also want to dive into a little bit more on the internal wise. And I know the first thing everybody wants to do is they want to jump in and take this cone off. Um, I like to take this bottom section out first. Uh, that way I'm only having to use one screwdriver and I'm not sitting here with two trying to take them apart. Um, with this all being intact, we're able to take our bottom out. So the first thing I want to do when I want to remove my cone here is I'm going to loosen up uh, my lock nut. And I'm going to spin that all the way out. 
Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to back this screw all the way in the out position. Now I will tell you this makes life a lot easier when you back this screw all the way out because what you're doing is you're actually going to be relieving tension off of this screen. If this screws all the way in, when you go to take these bolts off, you're kind of fighting it because the spring's starting to push it out. So always back this all the way out and then you'll basically remove all the tension off the spring uh, in that dome section. Now take this off. You're either going to have Phillips head or an Allen wrench. What we'll do is we'll start taking these off. Alright, so now we've removed all of our screws and we're able to take our dome section off. You'll notice we really don't have anything in there. Uh, it's just a port where our screw head will come drop down through. We'll have our cap, which is where our screw is hitting. Uh, this is our spring. Very, very important. Make sure you don't lose this. Okay, and then we have our large diaphragm. Now I will say that I get a lot of calls where uh, people have just replaced this diaphragm and nothing else internally and they get aggravated because it's not working. I will tell you that if to troubleshoot this diaphragm, okay, to know if this diaphragm's ripped, uh, if you would take this off and any sort of water would say come off the top of this, we know we've got a di bad diaphragm. But if we remove this cover, and everything's pretty much dry, it'll tell you right off the bat, hey, we don't have any water coming up from the device through this, um, through this diaphragm and fill in this area, okay? If you're rebuilding it and you got the parts, I would su suggest that you definitely replace this diaphragm, but it's not always the first thing that you want to go after, okay? So the first thing I do when I want to remove this is I've got my bottom so I can take my finger and I will just push up on my stem and the entire piece will come out, all right? So we've got our large diaphragm here. Also, one of the overlooked ones is our small O-ring. Remember, we've got a solid piece of brass, a solid brass stem. Uh, we need something to seal this up so water doesn't creep from the bottom and then get up here through the top. All right, so to remove this diaphragm, pretty much what you're gonna do is just, I can normally hold down on my stem, grab my nut, loosen it up. If you can't hold that, you can also take a screwdriver, hold it here, and then back this thing off. But normally it's pretty easy. It's greased up when it comes in. We remove our nut. We have one lock washer, one large diaphragm washer, and then we have our diaphragm itself. Now, one thing you want to remember when we're looking at the diaphragm is we're going to have ones with lines on it and then one that's smooth. We always want to have our lines in the down position. Okay. So to replace that, we'll pull everything off, set everything back on. Try to keep our holes lined up. Washer right back in place. Remember the lock washer. We don't want this should be sitting here. It's going to have vibration. So our nut will back off. So make sure we definitely put our lock washer back on. Okay, now we're in good shape. If you want to get a little tighter again, you can hold back with a screwdriver here. Hold our screwdriver back here and then tighten everything up in that direction. So the other thing we want to do is again, pinch that O-ring up and then that O-ring will pop right out of that slide and you'll be able to put your new O-ring on. And then what I like to do is throw a little bit of grease on that O-ring. The other thing I like to do is when this is normally installed in this direction or this direction, as I take some very fine, like almost like a scotch bright pad and I stick my finger down here and I just try to clean up that brass, any calcium that's built up in there. But you can go from the top and then also go from the bottom and just make sure you get everything cleaned out. Now remember, we do have a seat where everything's kind of setting on. So don't be taking screwdrivers and just slamming it down in there. Just a really fine scotch bright, some sort of emery cloth that we can just get in there and make sure we get that cleaned up. And then what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of grease, stick it up in that side, stick it on this side and grease that in. After I got a little grease on my O-ring, I'm going to take it. I'm just going to slide it, push it down, and then line our holes up, set my spring back on, my cap back on here, and then my dome piece. All right. reason I'm doing that is because I want to get all my holes lined up for my bolts. I'll get a couple of these started just to get everything in the right position. 
All right, so we got our cone on there. We got that nice and stable. Uh, what you want to do is screw these in and then also just do it like you're doing a tire. Tighten this one, this one, this one, this one, back and forth. Don't just take an impact wrench and start screwing this side down because what it's going to do is remember, this is just brass, so it'll start bending. So you always want to tighten it back and forth, get it into a nice pattern, get it tightened down, then one time around. Um, but again, by hand, you don't always need an impact wrench to do everything. So once we get this stable, We'll be able to flip this around. We'll take our new washer, just set it right down inside there. Make sure it's cleaned off. And then we'll just send it right inside there. And it'll thread right in for you. Now again, this does not have to be 10,000 foot-pounds of, of pressure. Just get it tightened. And then just lock it in. Once that's locked in, again, we don't need Teflon. We don't need pipe dope. We have an O-ring seal. Hand tighten, take a wrench, and just do quarter turn. So now the valve is completely rebuilt. Everything's cleaned up. Now let's go into actually how to set these, okay? So the first thing you're going to want to do is it's all the way in the out position, all right? So what's in the out position is I don't care how much water we're putting in, we're going to end up coming out with about 20 PSI on the downstream side, okay? Now in order to adjust this valve, what we want to do is we want to get as much water possible running downstream. You cannot adjust one of these valves without water running. All right, if no water is running, you will crank this in all day and nothing's going to happen. But as soon as you turn the water on, our pressure is going to increase immediately. Okay. So before we do anything, we want to get a good amount of water running downstream based on the size of the valve. Uh, is the amount of water, but I would say if you could get yourself a hose on a three-quarter, get yourself a hose bib, a mop sink, and maybe a kitchen sink running, that'll be plenty of water, okay? So as we're running that down, what we'll do is we're going to start to screw this in the in position, okay? Just remember, it's always in to increase, all right? So as I'm screwing it in, I'm also be watching my gauge, and as soon as I have any movement on my gauge, I will stop. All right. So as the gauge comes up in pressure, then I'm going to stop. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to do basically a half turn and then watch my gauge go up. All right. Another half turn to get it close to where I want. And then to get my fine tune, we're just barely going to bump this to bring our pressure up to where we want our set. Now, one of the big ones that I see people forgetting is this small, this little lock nut. OK. Remember, as water's flying through here, we're going to have some vibration. So this bolt is going to slowly start backing its way out if you don't tighten this up. And obviously, like I said before, as this comes out, our pressure is going to decrease. So if you install this and don't lock it down, after about a year, what's going to happen is you're going to start losing that pressure. And that's strictly because this bolt is starting to back its way out. So just remember, once you get it set to where you need it, get in here and tighten down that lock nut. All right. Don't get a call back after a year, run into problems just because we skipped one little step there. All right. So we talked a little bit of troubleshooting. We talked a little bit of, you know, rebuilding and a couple of the key components in here. Uh, but one of the other key components that uh, you'll have with this 25 AUB is you're going to get a call that, hey, in the evening time, my pressures are starting to rise. Uh, downstream, not upstream, but downstream. Uh, it doesn't seem like this is working. But remember, every time you heat water, that water is going to expand. All right. It'll start expanding on this downstream. All right. So if you have thermal expansion uh, overnight where you, you notice that your pressures get really high in the evening, but then drop down in the middle of the day, what you'll want to do is don't jump into this valve here. What you'll want to do is move over to your water heater and then look at that expansion tank. OK, because that expansion tank is taking the thermal expansion out. Also, another big topic when we're talking about these expansion tanks are uh, when you buy them, just remember half of it's full of water, half of it's full of air. So if you're installing an expansion tank, make sure that you set the pre your air pressure even or four pounds below what your pressure is coming in. The way you do that is just on the Schrader valve, you'll start pumping it up. Um, all of our expansion tanks will come with 20 PSI, but if I have 60 pounds of pressure coming in, you'll find that it's already expanded. So in the evening, if you're getting a lot of thermal expansion and your pressures on your downstream are increasing at night and dropping back down, make sure you don't jump right into PRV 
maybe take a look at your thermal expansion tank that's going to be tied onto the cold water line of your water heater. Now, what's really nice about this one is another key feature that not a lot of people know about is we will actually have a relief valve built into here, okay? On the smaller ones, it'll be built into the stem. On our larger ones, it'll actually be built into the top here. If our downstream pressure goes two pounds higher than our upstream, we have a small relief valve port that will actually take this pressure and push it back downstream. Uh, that's something that the 25 AUB is known for. Now, again, you cannot use this relief valve as your expansion, but if you do have high expansion downstream, built into the, every one of these valves, uh, that if it goes two pounds on over this side here, it'll actually push that pressure back into the downstream area. All right, everybody, hopefully this video helped you out. I know we went over a couple of troubleshooting steps on the strainer and then how to rebuild it or how to maybe look into something not the pressure reducing valve, your expansion tank. Um, but again, remember, if you're in the Ohio, Indiana, or Kentucky area and you'd like to come in and do your own personal training for just you or you and your team, remember our wet lab uh, is 100% open. We don't charge for it. You can bring yourself or your whole team in uh, and we can do whatever you guys are looking for. Again, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you'd like more. If there's something that you'd also like to see that maybe you're having problems with, let us know in the comments. Hey, do something on this or do something on that. It helps me give me ideas. Thank you.